Good morning. I'm Hugh Burrows. On behalf of myself and Reverend Ron Swisher, welcome to Mosaic. It's summertime in the Bay Area, and our thoughts turn to art and how to fill up your spirit with the beauty of art. And uh, joining us today is Mr. Timothy Brigard, a good friend of Mosaic over the years, and he is the uh, curator of American art and actually in charge of all of that. Uh, he's here to talk to us about Richard Diebenkorn and a show that's going on at our friends, the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Then we're going in the second part to, uh, we're going to talk with Melissa, and she's going to tell us about the Impressionist show that is uh, also at the Fine Arts Museums. And good stuff, you should go out and see it in the beauty of the summer. Timothy, welcome back. Welcome. welcome back. Thank you for having me. Diebenkorn, kind of know that. Help us. <laughs> it's a familiar name. Yeah. Diebenkorn is a much beloved hometown hero of the Bay Area and San Francisco in particular. He grew up in the Ingleside Terraces neighborhood. He went to Lowell High School. He went to Stanford. He went to Cal. And he went to the Art Institute. So he mm -hmm. really is born and bred in the area and really a product of the nature and culture of the San Francisco Bay Area. And the exhibition, of course, is devoted to the Berkeley years. He was here from 1953 to 1956. And this is really the period when Richard Diebenkorn becomes Richard Diebenkorn in the sense that we know him today as an artist. He spent 13 years. He created both extraordinary abstract expressionist works and also, somewhat surprisingly and very controversially at the time, he then made the switch three years in in 1956 to figuration and these are the other aspects of his work um, that are now known to us today. So will I know him if I see one of his paintings on the screen here? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And we can, we can look at some of those images. Uh, we go first to Berkeley number three, which is one of the most beautiful of the abstract expressionist works. It's a work owned by the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco. Um, they're numbered sequentially, which suggests that they were part of a totality of a total group of works. And these are works that often have a very strong landscape feeling, but one of the revelations of working on the exhibition was seeing studies for this work that reveal there's actually a human figure embedded or embodied within the landscape. Okay, okay. Well, well t tell me what I'm seeing here if, okay, if, if, if I'm a demon corn is, scholar. Um, a work that is divided into sort of three dominant bands that go horizontally, very much like topographic stratification that we all experience here in the Bay Area. He lived in the Berkeley Hills, so he often had that amphitheater like perspective on the Bay. Okay. Foreground Berkeley, middle ground Bay, and then of course the high horizon line that you see sense in this painting. But there's also this figure we know from looking at these other studies, the oval at the upper left, um, and then these two very curvilinear breast-like forms are actually a female figure. We know very explicitly from these other works. And in this work, Diebenkorn was able to reconcile one of the great conundrums of the 1950s, this is from 1953, which is to fuse the figure with abstraction. They were often seen as opposing camps. You were either right. a figurative representative artist or you were an abstract artist, Diebenkorn was able to bring them together in this incredibly complete synthetic fusion. How big, how big is that painting? This painting is actually about four and a half feet across by three and a half feet tall. So it's, it's quite encompassing. You really feel almost life-size. So, so when I go see it, I could see the woman in there yeah, and absolutely. all of this. Okay. <laughs> That's, uh, so Diebenkorn, uh, and, and he's working in oils? He's, he's working in him. oils, but he also is one of the great draftsmen of uh, his generation. And so they're extraordinary. About a third of the exhibition or works on paper, both from a live model in the studio, which he did with Elmer Bischoff and David Park, two other famous okay. Bay Area artists of the generation. And they would hire a nude model together because it was less expensive to do that, and then have these wonderful drawing sessions. And many of those very beautiful figurative works are in the exhibition as well. Wow. Can we see another one, please? Yeah, absolutely. We'll go to uh, Berkeley number 44. This is the kind of supposedly abstract painting in which viewers often feel very strongly a sense of landscape. The beautiful swaths of green feel like fields. Right. The blue, both in the middle and on the horizon line, often feel like bodies of water or sky. And this work was actually reproduced in Life magazine in an article called Look of the West Inspires New Art. And they juxtapose it with a photograph of Napa Valley and suggested that Diebenkorn was looking at these kinds of landscapes with the horizontal stratification. And I think viewers often feel that this is the kind of elemental meeting of Earth's 
sea and sky that we experience here in the Bay Area every day. It's where we live. It is yeah. where we live. <laughs> <laughs> this is super. So uh, he, he's numbering each of these works. And he again, yeah. um, to, to, to double back, we're focusing on his Berkeley years Absolutely. in this exhibit. And mm -hmm. how many uh, images or illustrations or whatever uh, are the, there in this? There are 130 works in the exhibition. So it's a major retrospective, and it's the first ever devoted to the entire Berkeley period. There have been other exhibitions covering other periods of his work, including the Ocean Park series, which is very well known. Mm -hmm internationally famous but this is the first one to focus on this period in his career where he really becomes a nationally known artist super can another one can we Absolutely. see another one um, so now we're going to switch to the figurative period. It's, it's, it's sort of this bifurcation. You'd almost think it was a split personality or two different artists' work. This is the very same artist in 1959, only uh, five years later, um, and it's called Figure on a Porch. It's a wonderful painting that really captures one of the things that Diebenkorn does best, which is to capture a sensation. All five senses are sort of activated here. You feel what it would feel like to be that figure barefoot on a porch, on a terrace, early in the morning, the beautiful warm sunlight suffusing the entire composition. The figure looks across the river or the body of water to the horizon line. It has all the sense of promise and hope of a new day, but of course it's completely an imaginary landscape. Diebenkorn That's almost never okay. stood in front of a motif, unlike the Impressionists, and painted an actual subject. It's all drawn from his imagination. I was going to go look for that. I mean, so that's, <laughs> you want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's do another. Absolutely. We? This is a work that uh, is called Interior with Dory, but in fact, it is his studio. This studio no longer exists. It was behind a bar in Berkeley. It's right underground now, somewhere under the Bart Ashby stop. Okay. It was torn down in the 1960s. But what's wonderful about Diebenkorn's studio paintings is the studio, going back historically through time, has always been, of course, the locus of the creative life of the artist. But at the same time, this wonderful sense of inside and outside that you get through the open right. door, the open windows, it's really a metaphor for the studio itself being the realm of cr artistic creation is like the artist's mind, which is an interior life of the imagination. And then, of course, the exterior world is the observed world world, the real world, the world that indeed might be a subject for the artist if and when he leaves the studio. As curator of all of this, hmm? Where did this start, and how did you get it here, and what do you do as curator to, to bring these things? Well, it's a major undertaking, and it's always a team effort, as you can mm -hmm. imagine. Um, this was several years in the planning, and because we recognize that this period had never had an exhibition or a publication, we have a very beautiful book with scholarly essays devoted to his work during this period. This really became a primary focus, and especially because we're here in the Bay Area. While we're an internationally recognized museum, we also pay special uh, deference and homage and respect to local artists who are really part of our cultural landscape. Diebenkorn was the perfect artist, the perfect subject, um, especially in this wonderful uh, summer that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's the America's Cup summer. So we have tourists coming both nationally and internationally, many of whom will know and love Diebenkorn and feel like it's an old friend, and others for whom he will be a revelation. Going on right now. At the De Young Museum the through De September Museum. 29th. So plenty of time to go. Um, Timothy's going to be with us. We're going to uh, welcome Melissa Buron, who's going to talk about the Impressionist show. Then we'll put the two of them back together in the third segment. Amazing amount of information in a short amount of time. It's Thanks, a beautiful Timothy. show. Absolutely. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back.